Hello everybody, this is Amel and welcome back to another tutorial about MIPS assembly language. In this tutorial, I will explain one of my favorite topics in MIPS assembly language and the topic is multidimensional arrays. Um, and this topic is very important because as you probably know, multidimensional arrays are used a lot in high level languages like C, C++, Java, etc. So, as you know, my name is Amel Peralta, and I hope you enjoy this video. In the next video, I'm going to teach you the implementation, how to actually write your own two-dimensional array in MIPS. But before that, you need to actually know uh, what I'm doing. So I want to explain um, the basic idea. So my goal here is to give you a summary of the implementation of multidimensional arrays in assembly language. So, the truth about memory. In reality, memory is a single dimension entity. So, what that means is that a multidimensional array is implemented as a set, I mean, a set of single dimension arrays. And there are two ways to implement multidimensional arrays. One way is row major representation, and the other way is column major representation. Row major representation is the most widely used. Column major representation was widely used in the old days. Uh, Fortran actually, at first, was using column major representation. So, in a high level language like C or C++, you can observe that this declaration right here, int array 3.4, is going to create an array, a two-dimensional array of integers that has three rows and four columns. And you can observe all the elements there. So, if, we, if you see this, uh, the first element is here, then you have the second element, the third, etc. Now, how can we do that if we only have one dimension in physical memory? I mean, how can we represent a two-dimensional array with only one dimension available to us? Well, if we use the row major representation, we have to place all the rows sequentially, one after the other. So we go row by row, and we place those rows next to each other, one after the other. So we start here, 0, 1, 2, 3, then we go to the next row, 4, 5, 6, 7, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then go to the next row, 8, 9, 10, 11. And this is row major representation. And once we have all these values placed in this manner, we can use the following mathematical formula. And this formula is going to allow us to treat this representation, these values, as two-dimensional array. So, the address of an element that I want to get is equal to the base address of the array. So let's say that if I want to get this element 3, the address of this element is the base address. So remember in MIPS, the base address is the label um, of the array plus the row index. So the row index of 3 is 0. This is the index of the row times the number of columns, the column size, how many columns we have, one, two, three, four columns. So in this case, the number of columns would be four plus the column index. And what is the column index for three? Is three. And then we have to multiply by the size of the element, the data size. Because these are integers, the data size is four bytes. So we multiply by four. So the address of element 3 would be equal to the base address of the array, the, the initial address of the array given by the label, plus the row index, which is 0, times the number of columns, which is 4, plus the column index, which is 3, times the data size, or um, in this case, which is 4 bytes, because these are integers. If they were doubles, it would be 8 bytes. 
The other representation that we have is column major representation. And this representation is similar to row major. The main difference is that instead of going row by row, we go column by column, placing each value next to each other sequentially. So we have um, sets of arrays, of single dimensional arrays. So we go 0, 1, 2 here, then we go to the next column, 3, 4, 5 here, then we go to the next column, 6, 7, 8 here, 6, 7, 8, and we go to the next column, 9, 10, 11. And we place these values this way and this is column major representation. So if we use column major representation, we have to use the following formula. This formula is going to allow us to get any element by simply plugging the values. So it's very similar to the row major formula. So if we want to get, for example, this, this element 2, we say the address of the element that I want is equal to the base address that would be given by the label in MIPS or the initial address of the array plus the column index the column index is 0 times the number of rows how many rows we have 1, 2, 3 rows plus the row index and the row index is 2 times the data size and remember that we are dealing with integers so the data size is 4 and that would give us the address of element 2 and we can simply access that element um, in MIPS assembly language. And this applies to m any assembly language but because this is about MIPS I just I just I'm talking about MIPS specifically. So thank you for watching this tutorial. Um, now that you know the basic idea you should watch my next tutorial where I program a 2D array in MIPS assembly language. It's going to be an awesome tutorial. You're going to learn a lot. And you're, you're going to become a better MIPS programmer. And maybe a better programmer not only in MIPS, but in any language. Because you're going to know how actually a two-dimensional array is implemented in assembly language. So thank you for watching my tutorials. I really appreciate it. Please don't forget to subscribe, like my video. Uh, please support me and thank you so much. See you next time.